Darby Allen versus Christian Cage. There we go. This. This was an excellent wrestling match. This was awesome. Awesome, awesome. Swerve and Fox are watching backstage, smiling as Darby's getting killed. Christian's out there, Christian's out there beating him in the most veteran pro wrestler manner possible. And it it's funny f- for many reasons, and it, but still true. Christian has been wrestling. Uh, uh, he had a puffy shirt when he was a vampire and lost that in like 1999 or so. Maybe 2000 during the invasion, but uh, now he's back to wrestling with a shirt on, but he's in by far the best shape of his life. That's true. <laughs> and he shared a picture on Twitter to prove it. He covers, he wears a shirt so his colleagues are not embarrassed by their physiques now, but he's yoked. And he's flexing in his turtleneck and posing in his turtleneck, which makes it even funnier. You remember how Vince... Uh, Coined him the creepy little bastard at one point. That's the story. My wife has said on many occasions that Christian is a very, very handsome man. Oh, really? Yeah. You need to get her on here and get her opinion. Yeah. I, he's not my type, but you know, whatever. So Christian's working over for a long time. Darby makes a mini comeback and the pace quickens, but they bonk heads. We go to a second commercial break. Uh, doing stuff after the break, and Luchasaurus tries to interfere. His distraction lets Christian hit a clothesline on the floor, but Darby comes back. It's the missile drop kick to the guy in the chair on the floor. The pace is going crazy. Then Darby misses a coffin drop on the apron. Now I'm going crazy, because that looked horrible. <laughs> and I don't mean horrible like, oh no, that was bad wrestling. Like, horrible like, that's going to break every bone on your back all at once. Mm-hmm. Not fun. Uh, Luchasaurus was pulling Christian out of the way there, so he gets sent to the back. But this distraction lets Cage the belt shot. He hits Darby with the belt so hard that Darby falls out of the ring. And by the time Christian has thrown him back in, Darby is able to recover just enough to get it from the ropes. So Christian keeps fighting. He's a sunset bomb and an awesome spear. <laughs> that spear looks so great. And uh, that got, gets to... He tries the kill switch, but Darby turns into a jackknife cradle out of nowhere and gets the win. An outstanding TV main event. And Christian Cage is insanely great. I thought this match was awesome. I thought the last few minutes were just fantastic. Uh, Christian out there, he's essentially he is the TNT champion. He demands to be announced as a TNT champion. Luchasaurus doesn't care, apparently. That's weird, but yes. Although, yeah. you know, they do do the spot afterwards where Luchasaurus puts him up on his shoulders as Christian parades around with the title. And I mm-hmm. presume we've got a Batista moment coming. Oh, 100%. Where he gives him the electric chair and turns babyface. But, you know, they, they do this great match, and obviously the match coming up at the uh, All Out show is Christian, or I'm sorry, Luchasaurus and Darby for the actual title with the actual champion. And so, you know, Darby fighting and fighting and two on one for a while and finally getting the win clean with the cradle. You know, that's that's great. That's awesome. I was so happy. And then Christian beat the hell out of him afterwards. And he attacked him with the belt, and they laid him out with a choke slam, and Christian covers him. Not Luchasaurus, Christian. Yes. Christian covers him. He demands Tony count three, even though there's a ref there. Tony has to do it. And he demands Tony announce him as still TNT champion Christian Cage. And so it's like, what did he beat Christian for? We just got all the heat back on Christian again. And the match isn't Darby and Christian. The match is Darby and Luchasaurus. Like, if Luchasaurus would have attacked him, and Luchasaurus would have beat his ass, and Luchasaurus would have covered him, then it's like, okay, well, that's a great build for this Luchasaurus-Darby match at at the pay-per-view. But instead, we had this great match, Darby overcame all the odds, he beat the guy, and then Christian just beat his ass and pinned him again afterwards. I didn't get that at all. But that was the end. I liked the match a lot. That was awesome. Darby comes up with new ways to make me uh, gasp out loud. Um, that that thing on the apron, that, oh my gosh. Yeah. That just, um, it's also weird too that, uh, that Darby's like in angles with two separate things. Yeah, well, he's allowed on both shows and so he's got feuds on both shows. <laughs> right. Two shows uh, at the same time. I wonder if any of, well, if. His Majesty allows them on the show. I wonder if the two angles will ever intersect. Well, you know, they don't need to. Just keep one on each show. Let's keep things simple. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. 
Well, that's the uh, show, and so uh, we're going to do the Q&A. I got uh, questions from the super followers. You can uh, put questions into the chat right here. And I got some text message questions, so is everybody ready to go? Sure thing. Go, boss, go. Mm. Do you feel AEW is hurting itself by booking back-to-back major shows a week apart? Yes. Yes. Nobody <laughs> thinks it's a good idea unless they work there. We'll see. Maybe to be a big success. Who knows? Well, but- I think that part of it is that he didn't decide, well, let's just book two in a row. I mean, he did. But the point is, that was the weekend that they could get the uh, the show in Wembley. Mm. And he wants to keep the uh, tradition of the uh, you know Labor Day weekend show. And listen, I'm all for tradition. You can skip a year. Yeah, sure. I mean... You know, you know, it used to be the end of uh, August tradition was SummerSlam. Well, now SummerSlam is at the beginning of August, mm-hmm. almost late July, and it's still SummerSlam. I mean, you could run your all-out show at the end of September. I mean, it's not the end of the world. You're not going to get Wembley next year, most likely, so you can go back to the traditional weekend. But, I mean, there have been a million traditions. You know, the tradition for Survivor Series used to be the Thanksgiving Eve tradition. Yep. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, they just didn't do that anymore because the other day was better. They just stopped doing Survivor so, Series matches. It's okay to break from tradition. Yes. That's why there's the term break from tradition. Sure. And I can't you, remember the last yeah. time I actually celebrated my anniversary on my anniversary. It's okay. Bert says, what's the best steak you've ever had? That'd be A5 Wagyu, in fact. Japanese. Not this American. Well, Wagyu. I went to a Japanese steakhouse just this afternoon. And had a flat McDon. That was some good eating. Mm. Scallops on the side. Not fatty enough for me. Yeah, this one was... I garlic. like a lot of fat. It's, uh, cooked in garlic butter. It was fantastic. In fact, I'd prefer all fat if I could get it. You can. You can a big steak gristle. Mm-hmm. I'm sure you can arrange that somehow. Uh, I think I had the tomahawk once at Daniel's Broiler. Oh. Big. That's a great steak. This person paid a dollar ninety nine to ask. TNA peaked when Crimson took his first loss. Agree? No, that definitely was not the peak of TNA. I'm afraid. <laughs> wow, the questions that come to people's mind. <laughs> yes. Crimson. Remember that where's guy? That, where's that guy now? He uh, he gave my son one of his uh, shirts when we were at the uh, one of the TNA house shows. Oh, for a friendly chap. I don't know if he still has it or not. <laughs> The point is he gave it to him. Yeah, that's true. What happens then is not his responsibility. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.